In this video, we're going to carry on with our plastic housing, creating the thread portion of our screw bosses. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with our plastic housing. This time, we're going to carry the screw bosses onto the other portion of the housing. So right now we have our top housing, and if we bring back one of our section views, you can see that we don't have any geometry at the top. So we need to create a section where we can thread in or we can put those screw bosses in. You can see that in the last video, we created an offset where we moved those end faces. And I'm actually gonna go back and edit that, and I'm gonna reduce this to two millimeters. And that way we're not taking that so far into the other housing. So you can see here, we've got the section for the head of the screw, We've got a passing or a clearance section, and now we need to create the part of the boss where we're actually going to thread in. Now, if you remember, we added some comments where we talked about the, th the, the minor and the major diameters that we would wanna focus on, and we also used our change parameters to create that whole min and whole max value. So what we wanna do from this point is we're gonna start a new sketch. I'm gonna turn off my section view. I'm gonna hide the top portion of the housing for now, and actually, I don't even need to see any of the electronics, but I wanna start a new sketch and I'm gonna focus on this face here. And I'm gonna say, create sketch. This is automatically gonna bring this face. And now I have this as a reference. We're gonna use our center diameter circle and I'm gonna draw two circles to get started. I'm gonna draw one big and one small. Then we're gonna use D on the keyboard. And I'm gonna start by giving this a whole value. So I'm gonna start with whole max, I don't know if I need to keep that size, I might need to go down to the smaller size, but we're gonna start there because we're gonna be tapering away. Then I wanna give these two an offset dimension. Now this is gonna be my internal wall thickness. And hopefully you're starting to see this is exactly why we took the time to create those parameters initially. Now if we take a look at this, you can see that this is gonna lay just inside of our original housing. So if we make this value a little bit smaller, it's gonna pull this one in and it gives us the available option to create a very small lip to help join them together. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna start here. I'm gonna finish this sketch. I'm gonna hide the bottom and bring the top back. I'm gonna rotate this around. And now I'm simply going to extrude this and see what happens. So when we do this, let's go to extrude. And when we're selecting the profiles, remember that we're gonna need both of those. We're going to say up to object, and we're gonna select this body. And we need to make sure that we draft them. So we're gonna hit minus D for draft. And notice that it's tapering those inward. So in this case, we want positive. So now you can see that it's drafting away. And if we go to this view, you can see that the inside is drafting away as well. We're gonna say, okay. And then we're going to inspect. We wanna figure out what the diameter of this is at the bottom. Now, because we are tapering to a curved surface, we actually won't be able to measure that. So it gets a little tricky. If we select the inside cylinder here, you can see that we don't actually have a, a value there. But what we can do is we can take a look at this, we can create a sketch, and we can simply draw a circle in here. And we can see that this is coming in at 1.73 or so. And if we give this a dimension, in this case we say whole min, you can see exactly where that's falling. So at the very bottom, we're a little bit smaller than the minimum size we want for our hole, which means that we made a good decision by creating that hole max at the top. There are a couple other things that we need to do here. So I'm gonna finish this sketch and I'm actually gonna delete it, we don't need it. For this boss, I think that the, the size works out okay, the taper works out okay, but we need to add a structural rib or two onto here. We need to make sure that it's strong enough. We might wanna connect it back to this wall. And we also need to add a chamfer where the screw goes in. Now it's generally a good practice for us to chamfer that leading edge and it helps reduce the stress when the screw goes in. When we were looking at different screw sizes, we did note that some of them have a, like a different helix, like a dual helix thread, and those help with reducing the stress on brittle plastics. But in general, having this taper will help center the screw and will help reduce that stress when we're uh, sort of just starting out threading this. So we're gonna say, okay, add that chamfer on there. Then we're gonna go back to this top face. I'm gonna create a sketch. And what I wanna do is I wanna create some um, 
it's just some sort of ribs. These aren't going to go all the way from this top face, but I'm going to draw them on the top face. And the main reason I'm going to do that is because this gives me this outside reference. And as I go further down the boss into the housing, then this is going to be inside of any tapered wall. So I could use it as a really great reference. So let's start by using our line tool. And I'm going to come over here from the, uh, the origin here, and I'm going to sort of drag this out. I'm going to say, OK. I'm going to use project on the keyboard P, and I'm going to grab this edge and say OK. And I'm going to drag this back until I find the midpoint. So usually with something like this, we'll be able to find a midpoint if it's a true arc. That's not always the case. And if you can't find a midpoint, then what we want to do is we want to use our line tool, and we're going to add a horizontal or vertical reference. That'll be construction. And then we'll use it to dimension a 45 degree angle here. So that way we know we're perfectly in the corner. This is going to be the reference. It's going to control things like the parallelism of the lines we add. So this one is construction as well. And then we're going to add some additional lines. These don't need to come from the origin. They can come from this projected edge. I'm going to come out. I'm going to come over. I'm going to come back to it. And I want to make sure that this, this, and this are all parallel. I'll make sure that those are parallel. And you'll notice that this one is already coming in parallel. This one has a perpendicular constraint applied to it. And while that might work in this case, I am actually going to remove it. And I want to stick with parallel. I want to make sure that I control it with this reference edge. Then we're going to use some dimensions. Now, it gets a little bit tricky here because we need to think about things like whether or not we're going to be dimensioning both sides and if we need to use half of an internal wall thickness. So one of the ways that we can get around this is by dimensioning the distance between these because they are parallel. We're going to use that I for internal wall thickness. And then I'm going to manually move these over. And what I want to do is I want this point here on our construction line and this edge to have a midpoint relationship. So that automatically is going to make sure that they are in the middle of our reference line. So these are all parallel. Our dimension is dictating how wide it is. And now we just simply need to make sure that this edge is somewhere inside of this wall. And we can do this a couple different ways. Because we know that this is tapering away, we really just need to make sure that it's at least inside of here. And we used a projected reference. So we can drag this until it snaps to that edge. And this should fully define it. If that doesn't, we can also use things like a tangent relationship. But if we take that center point and control or command to select that edge, make them coincident, that should fully define it for us. So that single rib might be enough, but we might want to consider adding some additional supports here. For this example, I'm not going to go too deep into the, uh, the sort of rules or theory behind this, but in general, you want to think about how tall the boss is, and you want to look at the kinds of loads that are applied. Now, for our specific housing, I'm not too worried about the load because what we have here is a lip on this side of the component, which means that we already have a positive feature that helps control its location. We're adding a rib that's going to connect to that wall. So this means that this is actually going to be fairly strong. However, there are other considerations like getting enough plastic into this boss. So when it's being injected, if this boss is really thick at the bottom or if it's really tall, then adding those additional ribs does actually help with plastic getting into those areas. For us, it's not going to be a problem, so I'm going to finish the sketch and just work with this one. We're going to extrude, but in this case, we're going to start offset. I'm going to go down probably three millimeters, but you'll notice it's going the wrong direction, so we'll put minus three, and then we'll begin dragging this down. What I want to do is I want to go to an object. I'm going to select the entire body. We're going to join them together, and notice that this is giving me a warning. It cannot complete the extrusion. And the reason this is happening is because we're overlapping the body we're trying to extend to. So instead of doing that, we're going to have to actually drag this down manually. And we have to be careful we don't come out of the other side. Another way that we could get around this is by using the two object. And instead of selecting the entire body, we could select a single face like this. So that'll allow us to get away from that. But also keep in mind, we do still need draft. So we're going to add draft. Make sure that it is drafting outward. So if we look at it from the top, you can see that it is going outward. And another consideration that you want to think about is whether or not you want to add fillets and round these corners. Now, from a, a stress perspective, the fillets are going to help. Again, I'm not too concerned with the strength of this design here because we are using the lip to positively lock it together. 
So I'm not too worried about that, but if you wanted to, then you can go ahead and add fillets to these vertical edges. Uh, and also if you want to around the outside. Just think about the fact that the mold for this is the negative. It's the opposite of what we're seeing. So things like the square corner, the tool can come down in and would be actually be creating the cut with the square corner and that would be perfectly fine. Now that we have this, we're gonna use that same trick for uh, sort of mirroring this or patterning this. So we're gonna to go to create, pattern and circular pattern. We're gonna use features, which will be the original extrude. It'll be the chamfer and it'll be the extrude for that little rib. The axis is gonna be again, the Z axis because we made sure that we did have symmetry. We're gonna set this to two and we're gonna allow it to adjust. Now there, typically there are three options. We have adjust, identical, and optimized. Now, because we are dealing with symmetry, any of those three would probably be okay, but it just gives it a little bit more flexibility to, to make sure that it can make those adjustments. You will notice that we did get the boss, but we did not get that rib. So that is a potential problem. A way that we can get around that is just by simply extruding it on the other side. We could potentially use circular pattern for faces. Now, sometimes this is a good solution. We can select the faces that we want. The axis, again, is going to be Z. The number of instances is going to be two. And notice with this case, we don't have that optimized or adjusted or identical. We simply say, okay, and we allow it to try to pattern those faces. Now, this is not an, a sort of a, an always solution. This doesn't always work, but usually if you have trouble with feature patterns or sometimes even body patterns, then trying the face option can be, you know, sort of a good solution or another method that you can try. So now at this point, there's a couple other things that we need to think about. So let's bring back the bottom housing. Let's bring back our section view. I'm going to go to the right, and I want to take a look at the intersection here. So you can see this is the passing section for our screw. We have this pretty big taper here. It's bigger than it actually needs to be, but I'm going to leave it for this example partially because it helps us remove some material from up here. But the other thing we need to think about is, do we want to positively locate these bosses together? The chamfer helps us locate them. The fact that we have a lip and groove helps us locate them. So in this example, I actually don't think that we really need to do it. But in some cases, you might find that on the boss where you have the screw passing through, you might want to extrude a small lip and create a feature where the two bosses will actually positively locate. Now, if we were using that to say, hold the circuit board in place and we had you know, very specific location, I would say that's important. For our design, I don't think it's a critical feature. So what I'm gonna do is we need to talk about some of the other openings that we need on this housing, but I think that's a topic for the next video. So at this stage, make sure that we do save and save often. If you have any questions, please let me know. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.